Oh my goodness, welcome to another math video and a new chapter. I know, my goodness, we're already in chapter three. Woohoo! We're cruising, my friends. Yeah, look at that, lesson 3.1. So we're cruising along here in fourth grade math with good old Go Math series. We have a topic today of multiply by tens. And then, of course, look at our purpose. This is our essential question. It's going to drive our learning today. And it says, what strategies can you use to multiply tens? Very cool. Yes, I like that topic and I like that purpose to this lesson. But, of course, you know what I'm going to do next. I know, you're waiting so patiently. We have to, yeah. Unlock the problem. That's right, my friends, because you know what? It's real world, baby. Real world. Real world. Yeah, it's a real world problem. I love these. It says animation for a computer drawn cartoon requires about 20 frames per second. It says how many frames would need to be drawn for a 30 second cartoon? Oh, this is really cool. I remember this when I was a kid. It was like really, really cool. You could take like a book and on the outside of the page, you could draw like part of like a little cartoon and then draw a new one every time in a different position. And when you flip through the pages really fast, you guys have probably done this too. It makes it look like it's moving. Yay. That's how Mickey Mouse and Goofy and those really old school cartoons from my day, you know? Yes, I was around during that time. Disney. <laughs> anyway, what do we have over here? It says the phrase 20 frames per second means 20 frames are needed for each second of animation. So how does this help you know what operation to use? Well, how that's going to help us is we have 20 frames per second. It's, it's basically we need 30 groups then of 20 frames. So we're going to need, we will need to multiply 30 groups with 20 frames. Because it said, how does this help you? Oop. Oh no, erase your time. Dun, 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 dun. There we go, yeah. Here we go, so it says, how, there we go. How does this help you know what operation to use? It helps us because of that right there, that 30 groups with 20 frames. Okay, let's move on. So it says one way, use blaze value. Of course, I knew that. Actually, I, I wasn't really thinking that. Okay, but that's all right. It says multiply. We could take that 20 frames, multiply it with a 30 like we already said. So we can think of it as 30 as three tens. Okay, I'm good with that 30. Yeah, because 30 ones really is what it is, 30 ones. And if you're gonna convert it, that would just be three tens. Okay, three times 10. Sure. So 20 times 30 is equal to 20 times, yeah, is going to be three tens. And of course, that's going to be equal to, ooh, 20 times three tens is going to be equal to 60 tens. Okay. That may seem weird to you, 60 tens, but that makes sense. Because if you have three tens and you're multiplying it with 20, you would get 60 tens. And 60 tens is equal to 600 because 60 tens is like saying 60 times 10. And of course, that's going to be 600. So you're saying because we have 10 ones in every 10 and we have 60 of them. So this is what we're doing. It seems kind of weird. It says, remember, the associative property states that you can group factors in different ways and get the same product. That's what this problem was doing. Use parentheses to group the factors you multiply first. Okay. Okie dokie. Now, another way, okay, is to use the associative property. I guess that's what we're going to be doing. Aha. That one was like a little post-it note for us because that's what was coming. It says you can think of 30 as 3 times 10. 20 times 30 is equal to, yeah, 20 times 3 times 10. Or we'll say the product of 3 and 10. But look what they did. They took the parentheses, though, and they put it around the 20 and the 3 rather than the 10. Why did they do that? Wait, well, that's a good question. Why did they do that? It's so much easier to multiply a number by a power of 10. So just taking our simple facts here, two times three is simply six. We do have 20, so we have to add on that power of 10. That gives us 60 times 10. And look how much easier it is just to think of it. Oh yeah, 60 times 10, 600. So 600 frames would need to be drawn for that uh, animation up above. Very cool. Yeah, that was kind of easy, huh? 
I think this lesson's gonna go by super fast. Now we do have something down here. It says compare the number of zeros in each factor to the number of zeros in the product. What do you notice? What I notice is I can see two factors. Both factors have a zero in it. So when I compare the number of zeros in each factor to the number of the zeros in a product, what I notice is, is that, hey, there's two zeros in the product and there was one zero in each factor. So it's almost like the zeros are just being added to the product. So let me write those notes down. There we go. I notice that there are two zeros in the product, one from each factor. Okay, time to get page master. That's right. It's another page. It's the second page. Now. It says other ways. Oh my goodness, there's even other ways. Cool. Use a number line and a pattern to multiply 15 times 20. Draw jumps to show the product. Okay, so it looks like what we could do here, because I see the 15 times 2, so I could just jump by 2s, right? 2, 4, 6, 8. You get the idea. And here we get to 30. And when we come to this one here, it says 15 times 20. Ah, look, at we've added on that little power of 10. So it's almost like the same thing. We're just going, yeah, 20, 40, 160, 180, 300. And see, I noticed the pattern right away that 15 times 2 being 30. Here, I've added one power of 10 to the 2, making it 20. So now I just have 15 times 20. So I added a 0 here, and that 0 was added onto my product, which is what we noticed in that example on the first page. Now it says use mental math to find 14 times 30. It says use the, the having and make it in half. We say have the having and doubling strategy. Step one it says find half of 14 to make the problem simpler. Think to find half of a number, divide by two. Oh, I like that. Okay, that's nice and easy. Seven. Yeah. Step two, multiply. Okay, now I'm taking my seven times 30, which was the other factor in my problem, which is really nice too, because that's just 21, woo, with a zero. I'm adding that zero from the factor into the product. Now, step three says double. Oh, double to 10. Think, to double a number, multiply by two. That's right, but here's the two right here. So if I double that, that's kind of nice. Doubling the two here is gonna give me four. And of course, doubling the 10, this part of it is gonna give me 20, 420. Well, you could probably just do that in your head and there we go. So 14 times 30 equals 420. So this was a great little mental math to solve a bigger problem. I always kind of think of it trying to find the simple facts, but there really weren't simple facts from the times table there, the 14 times three. But by dividing that 14 by two and then doing it twice made that problem much simpler. Now let's just try this. Multiply. Now these are the last two problems, I believe, on the page. Let me see. Okay, it looks like we have uh, one more sharing show at the end. But this might be a time where you want to just go ahead and try this on your own. You know, shut the video off and then turn it back on. I promise I'll still be here. Yes, I will, because this video is going to keep going. Okay, so it says try this. Multiply. It says use mental math to find 12 times 40. Now I kind of think of two different ways I would do this problem. One way I look at this, is I see a simple fact. See, 12 times 4, when I see that, and I'm just going to write this out so that you can see what I'm thinking. I wouldn't normally write this down. I happen to know that is 48. So now I'm not times, it's not times 4, but it's times 40. So that would mean that 12 times 40 would equal 480. 480 is what I would do for my mental math. But now let's see what they were trying to teach us. Is there another way? Well, would it help to find and do the same thing like we divided by 2? If we took 12 and divided it by 2, we would get six. We take our six times 40, which is equal to 240, okay, and then we would have to double. So two times 240 equals 480. We get the same answer, it's just if we know our simple facts, that will always make it a little bit easier. So that was the mental math. Now use place value to find 12 times 40. Well, this is what we were doing on the first page, where we have 12 times 40 is equal to 12 times four tens. I believe this is what they kind of want you to do since we have that power of 10 there. Then we just take our 12 times four, which is 48, but it'll be 48 tens. And of course, 48 tens, if we keep going on with this, 48 tens is gonna be equal to 480. 
Okay, because this is being, it's here we have to make sure that we put that power of 10 because these are 10s. So 4 to 8 10s is like 48, we'd like a zero on the end, right? Because 10, there are 10 10s, right, in 100. So that makes sense. And so if we have 48 10s, you can kind of think of it like this. This is 480, but this is really 480 ones, okay? Or, and I'm going to put or here, 48 tens. Or you could also think of this as four hundreds with a tens. See, there's so many different ways you can write that for place value. I think what's really great about Common Core is that it does get you to think about all the different conversions going from hundreds, tens, ones, and that kind of thing. I know I've mentioned this in a video before, but this really, really helps embed your understanding of place value. Anyway, it's time for Share and Show. That's right. Woohoo! It's math board time. Get out your math board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. It's where you get to have your fun with your little dry erase marker and you get to ride on a math board. Hopefully you have one. Okay, now it says find 20 times 27. Tell which method you chose. Explain what happens in each step. Okay, there's a lot of work here for this one. Well, when I look at this right away, this is kind of what I'm thinking. I like the 20 on the outside, so I'm just gonna reverse this and put 27 times 20 this way. And there's a lot of different things to see what we could do. For example, that is equal to Hmm. Could we say that's equal to 27 times, now I'm going to break that up with times 2 times 10. That means the same thing, correct? Can I double 27? Finding a half is not going to be nice because of the 7. But if I double 27, I happen to know that's 54. So I would say this is 54 times 10, which is equal to 540. Okay, that's one way. This is what would work for me. However, thinking, let's say you don't know 27 times 2, we could always do the place value way. Right, we had that 27 times two, I'm sorry, times 20 equals, well, this would still be very similar to this method, 27 times, right? You would have two tens. Yeah, and ultimately it would bring you to the same kind of conclusion here where you would need to get, that's 54 uh, tens, which again is equal to 540. How about our mental math? Okay, that's still similar. I'm trying to think if there's an easier way. Hmm. I can't think of a way that would be easier. I think that's pretty much it. I kind of like this method over here just because breaking the 10 apart makes it easier to almost, like you're almost dividing it by 10 and then multiplying it by 10. You're kicking it back. We just put it off. Oh, and I, and I probably could have put this in parentheses. That probably would have been, just so you could kind of see what I was doing there. Okay. Hey, you know what, my friends? That's the end of the video. Man, this, this lesson just was like really fast. And I don't always do this, but I think we should do this. Maybe I can start making it a habit. But just to refresh, to go back to see what it is that we learned. And it's all about multiplying by tens. That's what we were doing. Okay? And of course, what strategies can you use to multiply by tens? Well, now we know the strategies. We could use a number line. We use a place value uh, method with the, the tens, place value. I don't know what the, actually what it was called, place value method. I'll just put it like that so you know what I'm talking about. And also mental math, so whenever we can make it easier. Okay, just want to touch base again. That's what we did. My friends, thank you for coming along. So great to have you. Fourth graders rock. That's right, my friends. Now, live long and prosper.